Punita Saparwal, Managing Editor, Entrepreneur India. Today, we are in conversation with Sumit Mehta, co-founder and CEO of the Lead Group. Lead Group happens to be India's largest school at tech company. We have seen uh, the way you want to penetrate it through the various schools. Can you tell us more about what's the plan? How will you execute it? Because it looks like an interesting product. Thank you. Yeah, so the intent is that we work with some uh, progressive schools who are open to innovation, open to technology. And this year, I think we are keeping it restricted. So TechBook is going to be by invite only. Uh, we are looking to work with about 400 schools this year. And then over the next five years, then we'll expand the reach to close to 5,000 schools. We have a, a team which reaches out to schools and have existing relationships with schools. And we have a pulse on which are the schools who would love to embrace technology, love to embrace innovation. Uh, so we normally go to these schools, we demonstrate the product, they see whether it is going to work for their students and their teachers and then they adopt it. Uh, and uh, given that, you know, all the tech books are designed in line with NCF 2023, I think the acceptance and the adoption will be fine. Where well, once a school decides that they will adopt tech book, then they'll make it available to all the students. One is the online coaching and tuitions, uh, which is what I would call direct to student edtech. Then there is school edtech, where people work with schools and teachers to empower them with technology. And then third is the upskilling uh, edtech. Uh, so what is struggling or whatever news that we hear in the market is about the first edtech, which is online classes, coaching, tuitions, because they saw a massive uptick during COVID because everybody was stuck at home. So school edtech is, is massive and it is going to continue to grow. Similarly, upskilling, given our low gross enrollment ratios and what we keep hearing that our, our graduates are not employable, there is going to be a need for continuous learning and upskilling. So I, I don't think edtech is uh, like homogeneously affected. There is one part of edtech which is facing a challenge, but school edtech and upskilling are growing. Our plan is very simple. We want to be reaching more and more schools and students to offer them multimodal learning. Currently, we work with about 8,000 schools. And in the next five years, we want to increase this number to about 50,000 schools uh, and work with more than 20 million students. And as we do that, as we reach out to these students and schools and provide great learning, I think the financials of the company will follow. I keep saying that in in school at tech, Saraswati first and then Lakshmi. Okay. Uh, Lakshmi follows Saraswati. So if you deliver with great learning for a large number of students, all the financial results of growth, profitability, they'll follow. I think that's the most fun part because uh, we start with a question. Two years back, we began with the question that how do we make learning personalized for every student? Because in a 1 is to 40 classroom, it is not possible. And uh, at that time, generative AI was coming up and we said, can we leverage the power of technology with our understanding of pedagogy and curriculum and create a solution which can help every child? And what are the big problems? Reading, speaking, conceptual understanding. So that was the starting point. Then the curriculum team and the technology team worked together on language learning models and generative AI to create ERA and uh, Pi. And then they also work with multimedia companies to develop the augmented reality solution. So interestingly, I think, uh, like I was saying, you know, innovation always is happening at the intersection of two disciplines. So if I had just asked my curriculum team to develop, they would not have been able to come up with Pi or ERA. Or if I had just asked my technology team, they would not have been able to come up with RE. So these we have created pods of interdisciplinary teams inside okay. where somebody from curriculum, somebody from product and somebody from technology, they work together and then conceptualize a solution for a learning challenge like yeah. reading fluency or speaking or conceptual understanding. So then once we uh, develop prototypes, then we test it with students and teachers to get their feedback and see whether it is actually achieving the objective that we had set. And once those prototypes are successful, then we go into a full launch like what you saw in TechBook.
we began 12 years back uh, with just a dream which was that can we make propulsive learning accessible for every child in this country uh, and at that time nobody was thinking about this because everybody was used to a certain way of teaching in schools so the biggest challenge i have faced is habit uh, we are fighting like 100 years of entrenched habit of rote learning and lecture based teaching today also if you go to a school a teacher thinks that in that 40 minute period her job is to come and deliver a lecture yeah. uh, whether students have understood whether they have got it is secondary like i have to talk mm-hmm. and we are changing that and in fact ncf 2023 is now saying uh, in in now we, what we were saying in 2012 that you teach is not equal to they learn it has to be designed in a learning has to be designed in a way that you check whether every child has got it and are they moving at the pace that you are moving with the class uh so i think for schools for teachers and even sometimes for parents to understand that this is real learning what they call learning is not real learning that is rote uh has been the big challenge now given that you know we began with only 30 schools today we are 8000 uh there is openness there is adoption but even though we are at 8000 there are 5 lakh total private schools so there is still a long journey ahead